It's no secret that x86 is in a bit of a rough state nowadays. When you see all the innovation happening in the ARM world with Apple or Risk v too, it's kind of crazy to think that we might be moving away from x86 entirely as an industry. Historically, Intel and AMD have been too busy competing with each other to ever really bother with these other architectures. But now they see the writing on the wall and they're scared and they're bringing in crazy reinforcements. Not only have Intel and AMD teamed up, they brought in insane advisors and people to be involved, including Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Epic, and Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux and Git. I, I didn't believe this when I first saw it, but yeah. What? x86 Ecosystem Advisory Group with Tim Sweeney, Linus Torvalds, led by Intel and AMD, with all of these other partners. This is insane. I'm really excited to tell you all about this, but first, a word from today's sponsor. We all know the best way to get better at coding is to code more, but what should you build? Remaking the same website over and over again is only gonna help so much. What if I told you the best way was to build things that are more complex that you already use, stuff like Git or Redis or Bash Shell? It might sound impossible, but today's sponsor is here to help you out. Code Crafters is building a platform to make it easy to build these real projects based on real standards to level up in a more meaningful way. Their courses are nuts. We can just click through the Redis one and see in detail how they break down every single part. It's over 50 chapters, the first few of which are free. There are a couple other courses that are entirely free, so make sure you check those out as well. God, the SQLite one's really cool too. Important to note, it's only 30 bucks a month if you do decide to subscribe, but you get 40% off if you use my link below. Please do that, it helps the channel out too. And also, you might be able to get your company to help cover it. Most companies have an education budget and you can probably get them to let you spend it on this. If you're not already using that budget, make sure you ask because you'll be surprised how much money you can spend on these types of materials. Thank you to CodeCraftersIO for sponsoring today's video. Use my link in the description for 40% off. Let's dive straight in. This is the official Intel blog post discussing this. Yes, discussing this partnership between Intel and AMD. Unbelievable. Intel and AMD today announced the creation of an x86 ecosystem advisory group, bringing together technology leaders to shape the future of the world's most widely used computing architecture. x86 is uniquely positioned to meet customers' emerging needs by delivering superior performance and seamless interoperability across hardware and software platforms. I know exactly enough about architecture. They call this kind of bullshit. <laughs> We'll dive into the actual differences in a bit, but I want to break down what's going on here first. The group will focus on identifying new ways to expand the x86 ecosystem by enabling compatibility across platforms, simplifying software dev, and providing developers with a platform to identify architectural needs and features to create innovative and scalable solutions for the future. Th this is all corporate mumbo jumbo. I do love the picture of the Intel and AMD CEOs standing together. Never thought I would see the day, but that's how bad things are. That's how scared they are of the current ARM and RISC-V revolutions happening, that we're seeing an unprecedented partnership. I should disclose I'm an investor in both Intel and AMD, so I am very heartened to see this. I might make a lot of money long-term as a result of this, but that does not cover up my hatred of Intel and my general disdain for the direction of AMD as of recent. Yeah. Tom's hardware is a phenomenal source, so I'm going to read their thing for now. In a rare public-facing display of cooperation between two of the industry's fiercest rivals, Intel and AMD jointly announced their formation of a new x86 advisory group to ensure a unified x86 instruction set architecture moving forward, as well as improved consideration given both the potential additions of new features and the various x86 simplification efforts already underway. This is a huge deal. So I'm gonna give a really, really brief overview that is, if you're a CPU architecture person, skip this, not just because you already know it, but the way I simplify these things, it's gonna hurt you. As a really simple, like how a processor works, we'll say I have this chip and this chip adds numbers. I have one and I have two. This chip will have two pipes in it effectively. It has two slots that it takes things in on. So we'll now take the one and the two and then does some shit and out comes the response on the other side, which in this case would be three. So this is a really simple example of how the silicon works. Obviously it's gonna be one and one zero because it's binary. So it's gonna combine these and the result's gonna be one one. But this, people in chat are already catching it. Technically this is not a chip, yes, you're right. So the reality of how this works is this isn't the processor. This is one process in the processor effectively, one instruction type, one ALU is the common term for it. So this one ALU is for summing. So what this one does is it takes in two values and then it combines them and spits them out. There are lots of these in your computer and they all do different stuff. 
you have one for multiplication. You have one for division. And the multiplication one's just going to multiply 01 by 10, which is just 10 again. You get the idea. So your processor has tons of these, and not just one of each type, to be clear. Any die in your processor has a ton of these, like an absolutely insane amount. The important detail that is different, though, is how specific these different types are. The x86 instruction set, which is the number of types of these processing units that can exist in x86, is between 1,500 and 3,600 instructions, which means you have to have a solution for each of those instruction types. So now imagine you have 1,500 to 3,500 of these that you have to put into every single chip in your computer. <laughs> See how rough that can get? Now let's compare to number of instructions in ARM. 232 possible machine instructions. That makes these chips much simpler. It means that you can scale them up and print them slightly more easily. <laughs> and then if you go even further with RISC-V, RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. So it's literally less instructions. So something as simple as division doesn't exist in RISC-V. And ARM is based on a RISC architecture. It has many more instructions in it, but still not a whole lot of them. What's painful here is if you want to port x86 software to ARM, if the x86 software assumes that division is native or some other instruction is native and it can be processed really quickly as a result, but it's actually being emulated on the ARM chip, it can get rough real, real fast. <laughs> and that's why Apple did so much crazy stuff around Rosetta and actually put a chip in your ARM processor in order to allow it to better translate between those 3000 plus x86 instructions into the 232 that exist on ARM. It's also worth noting that ARM is a standard that is owned by a business and RISC is an open standard, specifically RISC-V, which is RISC-V, it's an open standard that anyone can use. And both of these standards, because the number of instructions is so much simpler, they're easier to manufacture, they're easier to scale up, they're easier to stuff a ton of them into a thing, and they're much more power efficient. Because if you only have 40 possible paths that each chip can do, just add more chips. This is why things like the NVIDIA GPUs have so many more threads than you have on a traditional CPU, because each of those threads has way fewer things it can possibly be doing. It's also why it's great for machine learning stuff, because you don't need all these weird instructions that exist in x86 in order to train against a ton of data. To clarify on the difference between RISC and x86, it's RISC versus CISC, which is a complex instruction set computer. It means those individual instructions can be more complex things, and it means the architecture is inherently more complex as a result. As such, CISC has been slowly falling out of fashion because we've proven we can do really powerful things with risk style chips, be it ARM and all the crazy stuff Apple's doing there, even Google's now throwing their hat in the ring there, or the crazy risk stuff that's happening at NVIDIA too. Like reduced instruction sets have been proving to scale well because we lost the clock speed wars. For a long time, it was believed that computers would get faster as we crank clock speeds up further and further. We get to three gigahertz, then four, then five, then six. We've largely given up on that in favor of different flows where we have more chips that are running at slower clock speeds because we started to hit limits on how fast we get those chips going. And that's why risk is so powerful because we can have way more of these risk chips and distribute the workloads. But that's also why x86 is struggling because only Intel and AMD are properly positioned to manufacture it. And the instructions continue to get more complex as they add more and more. And old software expects all of these weird pipes in the processor to still exist for them. Hopefully this helps understand also why the x86 simplification effort is important because the sheer number of instructions makes it really unrealistic both to iterate on the standard and for new manufacturers to build things that work with it. Back to the article. The company announced the new x86 ecosystem advisory group at the 2024 OCP summit. It already has several notable industry software and hardware stalwarts as participants like Google, Broadcom, Dell, HP, Lenovo, Microsoft, etc. It's cool seeing Google in here because they're actually deep on building ARM chips, but they're still supporting x86, which is cool. The 46-year-old x86 is the most prevalent ISA used for general computing for PCs and data centers, and Intel and AMD are the only two primary x86 architecture licensees that build new processors at high volumes, creating a duopoly. Yep, you also have to license x86, and it's a rough license. So yeah, these are the only two companies that make it, and there's reasons for it. 
Cooperation between the two, with the input of a bevy of customers and end users, will help to build a more unified approach that reduces or even eliminates custom ISA implementations that can be problematic for the duopoly's hardware and software customers. This is even more important as x86 ecosystem starts to face intense pressure from ARM in both the consumer and data center markets, not to mention the continuing rise of RISC-V. The new group intends to standardize at least some of the new additions and alterations to the x86 ISA, which includes several simplification efforts already underway. The alterations and areas of collaboration aren't yet defined, but there are plenty of clear candidates that could be up for discussion. For instance, AMD has this weird thing, the supervisor entry extensions, which are designed to clear up some of the older cruft in the ISA. By taking the supervisor stuff and hoisting it out of the ISA, they make the instruction set simpler, and this layer can own the complexity higher up. Breaking your chips into more different chips is also a big thing that these companies are realizing. Like, to go back to my little diagram here, how do you stuff video encoding down this pipe? The way Intel would do it, and the way AMD would do it, is they would add more and more of the things you needed to the chip to make video encoding slightly faster. Apple's solution was put a dedicated video encoder on your chip. So instead of having the ARM chip do that work, they just put a different chip next to it that's better at it. That concept of different chips that serve different purposes is not a thing x86 has even really thought of before. As a standard, it's not built to do that type of thing. Apple just kind of does whatever. <laughs> They also call out here that Intel has the flexible return and event delivery code, which has similar goals. Intel's even begun to work on x86s, which is a simplified 64-bit only implementation designed to strip out even more of the legacy craft. Didn't hear about that before. That's actually really cool. x86s. Dope. While cleaning up is an obvious area of potential collab, the x86 ISA is also constantly moving forward with new additions, and here, alignment between Intel and AMD could become even more important. For instance, Intel has recently introduced AMX, which is a matrix math extension that dramatically boosts performance in AI inference workloads, as well as AVX10. Both would benefit from more uniform implementations among the vendors. This is also actually very interesting because AMD is kind of getting fucked by NVIDIA right now on the GPU world because all of the AI training stuff is built on top of CUDA, which is NVIDIA's proprietary model for accessing their GPU layers. People have been trying to re-implement CUDA on top of AMD and it's actually going surprisingly well, but AMD can't officially support it because it's not an official standard. Now, if they want to compete with NVIDIA, they're teaming up with Intel in order to make a standard that they can build and iterate on in x86, which NVIDIA is not equipped to build. Very interesting. As I say here, there will certainly be even newer and as yet unforeseen additions, particularly regarding various extensions that support AI operations. Very exciting. AMD and Intel are excited to come together in this. We think it's one of the most significant shifts in the x86 architecture in decades. As Justin said, x86 is the de facto standard. It's a strong ecosystem, but it's one that Intel and AMD have co-developed in a way, but at an arm's length. And that has caused some inefficiencies and some drift in portions of the ISA over time. It's cool that they're actually publicly acknowledging that the weird way the standard has been developed where they don't talk to each other and they try to ignore each other has made the chip in the standard less efficient. It's cool seeing them own this. Like they're not pretending like, oh, we just did this. We thought it was a good idea. No, they recognize the fundamental failures that have been existing more and more in the x86 architecture now for a while. This is a, a fun article. I'll, you know what? I'll leave this in the description. This is why x86 needs to die from March of this year, where it breaks down just how out of date the architecture is. God, there's so many layers now. Zen 4 is a monster. Not only does it have four ALUs, it has three AGUs as well. Some of you may have heard of the arithmetic and logic unit before, but address generalization units are less well known. All of this means that Zen 4 can, under perfect conditions, perform four ALU operations and three load and store operations per clock cycle, which makes it two to ten times faster, but it's so complex. Like, there's weird ones like MP sad BW, which is a six to seven byte long instruction, and it compares how different a four byte sequence is in multiple positions of an 11 byte sequence. What? There's so many of these weird instructions. It's kind of insane. Apparently, Prime and Casey tore that one apart. I actually, I vaguely remember watching this, but yeah, there's a lot of good context there if you're curious about it. It's weird seeing an AMD and Intel employee like being so friendly. We're going to remain fierce competitors. You know, Justin and I are friends first, but when we show up to work each day, we are fiercely trying to compete on behalf of our companies and ensure that our customers have compelling choices from each one of our companies. But we can compete even while we're driving industry standards together. And there's a rich history of Intel and AMD doing that. Not really, but I like the, I like the sentiment here. 
I think the other question you might ask is, why now? It's because we're seeing a real shift in the demand for compute. We're at an inflection point. We think it's the right time to enable this new consistent architecture as a source of innovation for our ecosystem. Okay, this is them corporate speak saying, we're scared ARM's gonna eat our breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I like the call out of security here too. There's been a lot of weird security issues from Intel and AMD trying to optimize these weird instructions, ending up with weird memory access patterns and then having to revoke it, causing massive performance like degradation in these chips. Like Intel had to remove some of their optimizations to make the chip secure because of a, what was the big Intel side channel attack? The really big one, I always forget the name of it. Spectre, yeah, Spectre was brutal which allowed you to access things going on in the chip by just calling specific instructions. And they had to fix that by turning off a bunch of their optimizations. Horrifying. Yeah. The only other company that currently has an x86 license is this weird one, Via Technologies. They're in a weird state. I think I saw an LMG video a while back where they actually tried to use one of their processors, like one of the few x86 chips that wasn't by Intel or AMD, and it was slow as hell and buggy, but it worked, which was interesting. I like the call at the end here. We're not going to see any change for at least a year. Like, I, I don't think people, even in tech, understand just how slow manufacturing of chips moves. It takes so long to spin up manufacturing facilities, to design these architectures, to agree on standards, to contract out all of the parts that have to be fucking built to actually start shipping it. It's it's kind of insane. Like, a year is a generous estimate. It's going to take half a decade or more to really see the impacts of. But my stock's probably going to go up before then. Fingers crossed there. I got nothing else. Keep computing nerds. And until next time, peace.